हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस वीडियो ऑन मेटल एंड नॉन मेटल पार्ट 15 इज ब्रॉट यू बाय एग्जाम फियर डॉट कॉम नो मोर फियर फ्रॉम एग्जाम बिफोर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव वॉच पार्ट वन टू पार्ट फोर्टीन इनरिचमेंट ऑफ कोर्स सो वॉट इज दिस सी जेनली द ओवर विच वी गेट राइट इट हैज मार्ड इट हैज लॉट ऑफ स्टफ्स इन दैट मार्ड स्टोन्स सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द केमिकल रिएक्शन प्रोसेस ऑन दिस it is good to remove this mud stone and all and this can be removed without any chemical process right so you remove the mud you remove the stone and your ore is enriched it has more ores actually and this process is called enrichment of ores where if you see the ores mined from the earth usually have impurities like soil sand and they are called gang they call gang these are the impurities impurities in the ores are called gang so what we do is this has to be removed before we start the chemical process on this right so before we start the extraction of the metal process we remove this and these are removed based on the physical property for example sometimes uh, you crush the ore and then use the sheave sheave kind of thing right to filter it so filter then you can remove that or sometimes you dissolve in water the mud dissolves in water so a lot of process we use which doesn't involve any chemical process they are just physical process where we use we take the advantage of the physical property of the ore to remove the gangs or the impurities so this process is called enrichment where we remove the impurities from the ores right so in this different separation techniques are applied accordingly based on the ores so we will not study this in deep now just understand that before we you, you get the ore from the nature it has mud it has stone it has uh sand in it because nature composed of mud sand stone so you have to remove all these things unnecessarily because before you start the reaction of the ore ore is really in the oxide form before you start the reduction process or any other process you want to remove these things and removal of this process is called enrichment of ore once your ore is enriched you have uh, ores without uh, sand or mud you start the extraction process of the metal right so the process is like this you uh, get ore from earth okay then you enrich it enrich it remove that is uh, remove sand stone etc once it is enriched you start the extraction process for extraction process it depends whether it is a metal of low activity series metal of middle activity series or metal of high activity for all these three we have different extraction process we'll explain that so let's take this chart which gives a clear picture of uh, extraction so you have this ore which have the constant we we did this enrichment first so enrichment is done here enrichment is done and we have got this step now in this then we have three option high reactive medium reactive low reactive right in case it is low reactive and you get sulfide ores jelly with low reactives you get sulfide ores then you roast that metal you get the metal and then you refine it i'll explain this part so in case it is low reactive you get sulfide ores and then you do a roasting i'll tell you what roasting is and then you get the metals and then you further refine it in case of medium reactive substance you either get carbonate ores or sulfide ores right so in that case what to do you do calcination in case of carbonate ores to convert that carbonate ore into oxide ores in case of sulfide ores again you do a roasting to convert into oxide ores so the end of the day we want to convert everything into oxide ores right oxide so when it is oxide we just reduce this metal so once you have oxide you can hit in the presence of carbon or there are the various process of reduction will explain that and then once you have the metal you can purify it. for high reactive thing you have to get this electrolysis of the molten you have to heat that ore you have to give it in the molten form and then use the electrolysis to get the pure metal because that's the only option so three options low reactive medium reactive you get carbonate or sulfide ores then you can use this uh, carbonate ore you can use the calcination sulfide ore you can use the roasting because the end goal is to first get the metal oxide because metal oxide when you have it is the next step is simple just reduce it and get the metal correct so let me repeat this you have sulfide ores you have you do the roasting you get the metal you refine it for the low reactive for medium reactive you may get carbonate or sulfide ores you have to convert this into oxide ores if you have carbonate you use calcination if you have sulfide ores you use roasting you have this metal oxide you reduce it you purify it that's all and for high reactive 
use it in crisis. So we'll, we'll discuss this one by one again. So we'll let's start with the uh, low reactive uh, elements of metal. So if you see, these metals are very unreactive, very unreactive. And sometimes you get, uh, if you have oxide of this metal, you can just heat that guy. Just by heating only, if you have oxides, metal oxides, metal oxide, for the low, low reactor, you just heat it, you get metal. We'll explain that. For example, you have HGS called cinnabar, one of the ore of mercury. When you heat in the air, it becomes HGO. When you further heat it, it becomes mercury. The reaction is like this. You have HGS, the cinnabar, heat it in the presence of oxygen, it becomes HGO, mercury oxide. And then you again heat it, it becomes, and you get oxygen. Here you get SO2. So you just heat it and you get the metal. They are low reactive metals. Similarly, for copper also, you get in CO2S form, right? You heat this CO2S, you get copper oxide, and in this copper oxide, you again heat in the same with this, you get copper. So that's how it is, right? So you just have to heat it. Heat, 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 and you get the metal. And that's the thing with the uh, low reactive metals. For the metals in the middle reactivity series, such as iron, zinc, lead, copper, etc., they are moderately reactive, correct? And these are generally present in the carbonates or sulfides. So either carbonates or sulfides. But it is difficult to take out metal from the carbonates or sulfide ores. So we'll convert this into oxides, correct? So what we'll do is we will convert this into oxides. So if it is sulfide, we can convert into oxide by roasting. And how to do this? you heat in the presence of oxygen. So you have this zinc sulfate, you have a lot of oxygen because a lot of oxygen is required. You heat this guy, you get zinc oxide. And this is called roasting, right? Roast a sulfide, sulfide to oxide. It's called roasting in the presence of oxygen. Then you have carbonate ores. Carbonate ores can also be converted into oxide by heating in the presence of limited air. And this process is called calcination because if you see, there is no oxygen required here, right? So you have zinc carbonate, you heat it, it becomes zinc oxide and carbon dioxide. Correct? So zinc carbonate is a carbonate thing, you convert this to oxide. Here also zinc sulfate, you made it to zinc oxide. Because it is easy to get zinc from zinc oxide. So this process is involved if you have carbonate or sulfide. And generally for metal reactive, we get carbonate or sulfide. Uh, compounds also, right? So we got uh, carbon or sulfide compounds converted to oxide using calcination or roasting. So sulfides to oxide is roasting, carbonate to oxide is calcination, right? One way to remember this is sulfide is sulfur actually, S U L P H U R. So S and R are matching. So when you have sulfur, you use roasting. And carbonate and calcination both start with C actually. So if it is carbonate, we'll use calcination. So that's easy to remember. But for sulfide, it is roasting. Why? Because sulfur is R ends with, uh, I mean sulfur ends with R. So sulfur is roasting and carbonate is calcination because both are C. Now once I have the oxide form, once I have the oxide form, it can be reduced to the corresponding metals by using reducing agent. And reducing agent, one of the example is carbon, right? Because when zinc oxide is heated with carbon, it gives zinc. You have zinc oxide, when you heat with carbon, you get zinc. And carbon is very cheap, right? So you heat uh, zinc oxide or any metal oxide, the reducing agent like carbon, you get carbon monoxide and zinc. But we can't use carbon everywhere. For some reactive metals, we can't use carbon. So in that case, we use displacement reaction. If you see, sometimes displacement reaction is used and for example, sodium, calcium, aluminum, etc. are used as reducing agent in this case. Sometimes, sometimes when you can't use carbon, in that case, we use sodium, calcium and carbon. For example, manganese, you have manganese oxide, you can't use carbon. So in that case, we'll use aluminum. So you get manganese out and air to go through. And you get heat also. Correct? Sometimes we can't use these directly. And please note that these displacement reactions are highly exothermic. The amount of heat is evolved is so high that the metal produces in the molten state. 
very 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 exothermic it is very very high now we'll discuss a new type of reaction called thermit reaction so reaction of iron oxide with aluminium to join railway tracks generally is used for uh, thermit reaction they are used to join metals they are used to join metal metal parts in the reaction that this you have uh, iron oxide you have aluminium you get iron and al2o3 and heat it generates heat actually and this melts the metal and clay and uh, the metal is joined this reaction is called thermit reaction very common reaction to join the metal parts reaction name is thermit reaction so in this case if you see these metals are very reactive on the top of the activity see they are very very reactive right and they cannot be obtained by heating with carbon why because if you see they carbon will not be able to reduce the oxides of sodium magnesium and calcium carbon will not be able to right why because these metals have more affinity towards oxygen than carbon so that's why we can't use carbon we can't use this carbon we can't use this carbon for these metals right so that's why we use electrolytic reduction electrolytic reduction in this case for example sodium magnesium and calcium can be obtained by electrolytic reduction of their molten chlorides for example you have this uh, sodium chloride molten form and then in this case you use electrolytic reduction the metals will be deposited at cathode and chlorine will be deposited and i'll show you how example if you see at cathode you have this guy right so you have uh, so you have this cathode here let's suppose which is negative charge and you have anode here which gives a positive charge that means there are very a uh, lot of electrons free electrons here right because cathode will give negative charge so a lot of free electrons will come here so this guy is nacl solution let's suppose nacl solution so they right so nacl will be in this form na plus cl minus na plus cl minus like right? like this so since it is na plus it will be attracted towards this electrons correct because there are so many electrons this is a negative charge this is positive it will be attracted negative and positive attracts right this is attracted and chlorine will be attracted towards this side this positive charge right sorry this is positive so if you see what happens is end of the day i have my this uh, uh, cathode and cathode and i have my this anode so all my chlorine ions will come here and all my sodium will so now what happens is the sodium plus from any cl will get a electron from this guy it will become sodium and will get deposited here right and at anode this guy chlorine minus will get this uh, will lose one electron to this guy because you see the electron flows like this right electrons flow like this so lose one electron and it become chlorine gas and it will get deposited here you understand the logic what is happening here so we have this uh, uh, container and we have some solution here which is the nothing but sodium chloride molten molten sodium chloride and and molten sodium chloride is uh, nacl molten which has na plus and cl minus so na plus will get attracted toward this electron that is a uh, negative side and cl minus will get attracted toward the positive side and this all this chlorine gas will get uh, uh, in this uh, part that is the anode part and all this sodium will get in this part that is cathode part and that's how this uh, extraction happens correct so once i have my metal extracted using uh, the various process described i have to refine this metals right thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again